Welcome to our lecture online. To get a better feel for what the quantum number is in a more realistic setting, let's take a box 10 centimeter on its side, so we essentially have a cube of side 10 centimeters. It's filled with helium, roughly at room temperature 25 degrees C centigrade or 298 Kelvin. And so what would be the quantum number in a situation like this? The idea is that if we go to a one-dimensional well, notice that the quantum number depends upon how the object, the object that we're talking about, could be an electron, could be a, in this case, like a helium particle. As it goes back and forth, what is the number of wavelengths we have when it goes from one side to the other side? So in this case, we have a half a wavelength, that's quantum number equal to one. Here we have a full wavelength, quantum number two, one and a half wavelengths, quantum number three. So it's essentially the number of half wavelengths from one side of the well to the other side. So we're going to use the same concept for the box. In one dimension of the box, it's made it easy by making all dimensions equal in size, what are the number of half wavelengths for a particle moving from one side to the other side? In this case, the particle will be an alpha particle, the helium nucleus, and the distance from one side to the other side is 10 centimeters. All right, how do we do that? First, let's start with the Broglie wavelength. We note that the Broglie wavelength is equal to the Planck's constant divided by the momentum, which is mass times velocity. Planck's constant is defined as 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Then we find the RMS velocity, which is the representative velocity of a helium particle in the box. It would be the square root of 3 kT divided by m, m being the molar, not the molar mass, but the actual mass of the molecule, the molecular mass. It's easier to turn that into the molar mass and take Boltzmann's constant and turn that into the gas constant because essentially this ratio here is the same as this ratio. So when we plug in the values, R being 8.315, temperature 298 Kelvin, and the molar mass is 4 grams per mole or 0.004 kilograms per mole. When we calculate the RMS velocity of a helium molecule at room temperature, it's about 1,363 meters per second. That's moving along quite fast. Ooh, that's about 11 soccer fields, so to speak, in one second. All right, now that we have the velocity, we can go back to the equation for the Broglie wavelength we had over here, Planck's constant, the mass for a single molecule. So it would be the molar mass divided by Avogadro's number, and then the velocity will use the, R, uh, the RMS velocity. That comes out to a wavelength of 7.32 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, or in angstroms, 10 to the minus 10 meters. It's roughly slightly bigger than, than the Bohr atom uh, radius, so to speak. All right, uh, it gives us some feel for it. Now we divide the wavelength by two because we want to know the number of half wavelengths. And then we can say that the quantum number is equal to the number of half wavelengths that fit into the box in a single dimension. So we take the length of the box divided by the half wavelength gives us the number of times a half wavelength fits into the box, a tenth of a meter divided by half a wavelength, and we get a quantum number of 2.73 times 10 to the ninth. So if we just continue upwards, then n would eventually turn into that number if we have enough half wavelengths for the distance of the length of the box. So that's how we determine the quantum number in that situation. Now, we're going to do it again, method two, but using what we learned in the previous video, the equation we learned, we apply it, and we should get the same answer. So let's try that and see if it's indeed true. 